the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. A262. Daniel 5-6. The prayer for Jerusalem for 70 years. In the flow of the ages, when the empire was transferred from Babylon to Persia, Daniel revealed God's power with balanced spirituality and sociality. First point, the last ninth of the Babylonian Empire was recorded in detail by Daniel. Despite knowing that the Persian soldiers were attacking Babylon, the Babylonian king was enjoying a feast inside with the faith that everything would be all right. The night, a thousand of the nobles and high-ranking officials were invited to the feast, and the cups and the plates used for the entertainment were the articles from the Temple of Jerusalem. To look at the circumstances of Babylon at the time, King Belshazzar's father left the country to his son, and he himself went to the desert for ten years in order to worship an idol called Sin. So Belshazzar took power, and the night before the fall of Babylon, he invited a thousand nobles and officials to feast and to drink. The articles in the Jerusalem temple were taken during the days of Jehoiachin, and the objects in the temple were being used for drinking and entertainment. Suddenly, a hand materialized and the writing on the wall appeared. All the people who were present turned pale, and Belshazzar was unable to think clearly as he shook in fear. His fear was so great, making him declare that anyone who was able to interpret what was written on the wall would be given the third highest position in the country, with his father in first place, himself in second, and the person to interpret this coming next. Second point, Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar the meaning of the golden idol, and Belshazzar, the meaning of the writing on the wall. When chaos broke out in the feast, the queen, or the king's mother, recommended the king to go seek Daniel for help. Therefore, on the queen's recommendation, Daniel was brought over during the night, and was told to interpret the writing. Daniel explained that the writing was the same as when Nebuchadnezzar had lost power. And as Belshazzar, who knew this, was still arrogant, God's punishment was now to be upon them. Daniel once again reminded the king of Nebuchadnezzar's decree, which stated that no one was permitted to speak against the Lord. The decree mentioned here by Daniel was in reference to Nebuchadnezzar's second decree. And now Daniel started to interpret what was written on the wall. Many meant that God had numbered the days of the king's reign and brought it to an end. Tekel meant the king had been weighed on the scales and found wanting. And Perez meant his kingdom would be divided and given to the Medes and Persians. All in all, the writing on the wall stated that God had decided that Babylon would come to an end, and that God would now divide the power into two. Although what Daniel said was absolutely shocking to say the least. Belshazzar thanked Daniel for the interpretation and indeed made Daniel the third in power. And so, for the remaining few hours of the Babylonian Empire, Daniel was made the third in power. Daniel's prophecy came true in a matter of hours. Third point, although the politicians of the Persian Empire did all their research to find a fault in Daniel, they were unable to find even a small one. Now Babylon fell and the Persian Empire rose. Daniel was scouted to an even higher position in the Persian Empire, but the politicians who worked for King Darius were jealous of Daniel. And this was because Darius tried to make Daniel lord over them. 
In order to find a fault in Daniel, they started to trace back Daniel's records. They looked into his life, including his faith, his personal life, and his professional life, but they could not find a single fault. Despite how Daniel worked for both the Babylonian and the Persian empires, he was totally clean from any faults. In the end, they made a fault of his religion. The fact that they made the law valid for only 30 days shows that this law was directly targeted at Daniel. The man who made this law also knew how powerful the king's decree was. First point, despite knowing the trap targeted at him, Daniel still fried throughout the Babylonian and Persian empires. Daniel did not last in prayer all throughout the Babylonian and Persian empires. The reason Daniel was able to live in faith was thanks to Jeremiah's letter. Daniel knew that the Babylonian Empire would expire after 70 years, and he also knew that a kingdom of Christus was incomparably stronger than any empire. Thus, Daniel did not kneel before Babylon or Persia. The prayer of Daniel was based on Solomon's dedication of the temple. In Babylon, Daniel had lived with the best clothes, best food, and best accommodation. In many ways, he lived a better life than he would have lived if he was in Jerusalem. But despite this, he prayed ever so sincerely for the restoration of the Jerusalem temple. Even when his life was in danger, he still prayed for his people and for the temple. Fifth point, Darius came to trust Daniel all the more after the instant of the lion's den. When the Persian officials saw that Daniel did not last to pray, they skimmed through this. But they came to find that the Persian king worried for Daniel. Eventually, Daniel was placed into the lion's den. When Daniel was placed into the den, Darius fasted and even went to check on Daniel at dawn. On the night, Daniel went into the lion's den. The Persian officials would have had the most pleasant sleep. However, Darius became so angry that he had been fooled and so went to the den first thing in the morning. When he called out for Daniel, to his surprise, Daniel answered back. Daniel was alive. This was God's miracle. The Persian officials who schemed against Daniel had quite the end. Darius furthermore sent out a decree. The remaining days of Daniel's life was peaceful. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zoe is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.